subscribe. Ojisan. Hello everybody, Ojisan here. Uh, I've been asked a couple times to kind of do a walkthrough or a little tutorial on how to do these little landscape paintings I do. And uh, just to kind of refresh everybody, I use an XP Pen tablet. It's just a about a $90, maybe a $100 tablet. It's not very expensive. I've got a $300 laptop. So again, not super expensive. And I use uh, Autodesk Sketchbook software. And uh, so I'm just going to kind of walk you through uh, a quick little landscape painting. And we'll, uh, I'll kind of show you the brushes I use and the techniques I use to pull these things off. And I hope it'll help you guys out. So the first thing we do here is uh, we got our brush set up right here. This is a 10 by 10 canvas. I use this a lot uh, just because it's easy for me to manage and I've got it fit on my live stream str screen so that when uh, I live stream it shows up pretty well. Uh, these videos that I'm doing here uh, the video quality is a little bit better when I don't live stream because my internet connection is pretty slow so when I do these kind of videos where it's not live the quality is a little better so that's why I wanted to do it this way so the first thing we got all of our toolbars here uh, if it's going to be like a sunset I will typically go right here to my background layer It'll pull up the little color puck and I will make it black. Sometimes you can also get a really nice effect if you go with like a navy, real dark navy blue. But this time we're going to use black for this one. Now this little tool right here is my symmetry tool. And what it'll do is it paints both sides the same. Uh, so to create our horizon line we're going to change this to a horizontal symmetry line instead of a vertical one. And then I will drag this down about two thirds of the way down the canvas. Then I will lock it into place. And then I will turn this off just to get it out of my way. And we'll come back to this. We have to turn it off at a certain point. Uh, but this is going to be a pretty quick one here. Uh, not extremely detailed or anything. But I think it'll come out nice. Uh, so what, and and the reason too, if it's going to have a water feature in the front, you really want to use this. If it doesn't, if it's not going to have water in the front, in the foreground, then you don't have to worry about it. But any of the ones that with water, and a lot of mine have water because I love using that effect. That's why I use the symmetry tool. So in Sketchbook and in most of these programs, you're going to have a lot of these custom brushes over here in this area. And these are built in. They're built by other artists. And you can take any brush inside of Sketchbook and you can customize it to do all kinds of effects. And these are basically just brush palettes that people have built up. Now these are some of my favorites right here. Jason's free fantasy art set. I really love the clouds and uh, the rocks in this and sometimes you'll see me use this on my waves but it's kind of a shortcut uh, so that you can practice on your painting that you can go out there and build these clouds up and everything just like good old Bob Ross does uh, with some of the other brushes in here but if I'm just gonna knock out a quick uh, landscape video I'll go ahead and use these custom brushes now there are some in here that are just flat stamps, you know, it's got eyeballs and skulls and shapes and stuff like that. These aren't stamps. These are actually brushes. And it would be just like if you went to your local art store and bought a sponge brush that was cut into a certain shape or any kind of sponge brush. That's kind of how I see these things. So for sunset, uh, you can start at the top of your sky, and I really like the uh, where it kind of fades from uh, 
really dark blue like you can just start seeing the stars into the setting sun going down so we're going to go into a darker blue brush here let me pull this tray out just a little bit and uh, we'll move this out of the way and then we're just going to start scratching in some clouds up here in the top and you can see it's not a super dramatic deal and then we will fade into some dark purple and you can see how they'll just kind of blend together just like it, it tries to mimic the way paint would actually go on a canvas and then we'll go into just a little bit lighter kind of a almost a burgundy we'll go a little darker than that there we go now this little button right here is your best friend when you're doing digital artwork this is your undo button and uh, most programs you can go back a certain number of steps and uh, I'm not exactly sure how many it is in sketchbook it's quite a few but say I screwed up and put a cloud there that I didn't want I can just back that step up and now it's gone it's like I never done it now we're gonna go down and put some orange in and right here we're gonna start lightening it up a little bit because our Sun is gonna be kinda of setting down here and like you can see this is not uh, these aren't really stamped out clouds it's just a brush that helps you create that effect and then I will go into a bright yellow just kinda of right in the horizon now I've got this layer and by the layers that these are the layers over here so uh, we've got this layer established already with these background colors so what we're going to do now is down here there's a, another set of brushes and I've got so many brushes it takes me a while to dig through them we've got these smudge brushes and this big fat smudge brush is one of my favorite brushes this puck right here as you can see allows me if I go left and right it changes the size of the brush and if I go up and down it changes the flow and by flow it means how intense that it pushes and for what I'm about to do I like to have it somewhere around five percent but sometimes you gotta play with it a little bit now this tool right here is a line tool or a shape tool you can see you got line square circles and then like a zigzag uh, but we're just going to use the line tool for this and remember we've got this brush really big and really light on the flow and we're just going to take it right up in the middle and it'll just drag that paint right through the other paint and you'll get this kind of sunshine effect and there's where we'll use the backup the undo <laughs> we'll kind of take that off to the side and maybe we'll turn the intensity down to about three for the rest of these lines and then we'll just kind of come off at this angle and then we'll just kind of come off at this angle and then we'll kind of come over here a little bit and then maybe over here a little bit so now we've got this effect like the sun's kind of shining through there a little bit and we're going to turn this line tool off and now we've got this little effect right here going on and I will actually turn this way down to about two percent maybe if I can grab that just right and then I will uh, just kind of manually blend some of this so that it's not so sharp looking really subtle it doesn't take a lot but I just kind of want to blend out a little bit of those lines now if you like the lines uh, nice and sharp like that feel free it's your uh, it's your world as Bob would say you make it look however you want to okay so now our layers here we are going to add a new layer and this paint will sit on top of this paint 
nothing I do on this layer will affect this layer and I use that a lot and you'll see me lay stuff down fully intending on going back and cutting it out so that this layer below it can shine through so we're just gonna do a real quick uh, kind of a lake scene I really like doing lakes and for our uh, lake bank we are going to use this brush right here because it I can turn it super dark and super intense I turn it all the way up to a hundred and because it's kind of a uh, light dying light situation we can just start cutting in all kinds of shapes here and it will make this little effect right here and now I like to have it come in from both sides and like I said you can throw in whatever kind of crazy shapes that you want on either side of this and then I like to trail it off just a little bit down here and maybe just a little bit and see I'm changing that brush size right there and it'll kind of trail off into nothingness down there maybe this is the open mouth of a bay whatever whatever your imagination tells you it is that's what it is don't when I really try to be intentional with exactly what I want to paint it makes it so much harder on me than if I just start painting now there are some artists out there that are really really good at exactly knowing what they're gonna do on every painting and hats off to them because I am not one of those artists I kinda play it by ear so now what I was talking about uh, the layer behind this is underneath it so whatever I erase on this layer you can see it shine through from this layer so this is something I kind of I kind of don't do it this way most of the time but I'm going to show you this little trick for the shoreline right here uh, a quick and easy way to get your shoreline in <coughs> is to erase some of that layer out and I use the line tool to do that and I'll turn the symmetry off for a second and then you can see you've kinda got this indication of a shoreline right here and then we'll go back and touch that up before we finish we'll turn our symmetry tool back on and we'll carry on so now we've got our basic banks laid out we're gonna start a new layer and now this layer won't affect this layer or this layer and now up here there's a little and there's all kinds of brushes you can use you can do this however you want to I'm just showing you a quick and easy way of making these I say easy uh, it gets easy the more you do this so this is a smudge it's not really a smudge brush uh, what do they call this is it's an acrylic dry brush and remember all of these brushes are going to try to mimic what real paint what a real brush would do so again we want to have this little line tool turned on and you're just going to grab down here in your black area and you're going to start drag oh I'm sorry I do have to be on this layer I apologize because we are going to grab this black area and we're going to just going to start dragging it up and you want to drag it straight up because what this will do is this will start giving the impression of some trees if you choose to have trees in your painting and again I have the intensity turned way down we'll go back down to about 10 percent and I try to kind of hit it different ways different heights just to kind of give the appearance of a tree line and then uh, we'll hit this side a little bit and I like to vary it a little bit maybe not have exactly 
the same situation on each side just to make it a little bit more interesting all right so now we will go back to this layer that we just created which now will not affect either one of these layers and now we're going to go find some kind of a smudgy brush to start laying in our treetops we will go with let me kind of find one I like here and even though it says a snow brush it works just as well for leaves and stuff so we're actually going to grab this little snow brush right here and then we're going to decide kind of we'll make this kind of a fall scene so we're going to kind of do some orange and some red out there and then turn my line tool off I got to turn the in the flow up a little bit actually quite a bit we got the flow all the way up and then we're going to start kind of throwing just just the color in and just kind of the indication of this foliage out here and uh, you can you can have as much or as little of this as you want you can drag it down you can have some down here on your bank you can make some more trees down here whatever you want to do with this and I know it kind of looks like a mess right now but we'll clean it up and then over here these that are far away we're going to go a little bit smaller brush so that we can make these appear like they are a little bit farther off in the distance over here now to get kind of a, a textured look to it we've got that basic color laid down and I'm gonna leave it on the same layer because I want these to interact a little bit with each other we're gonna find a different texture and like I said you just play with these brushes find one that works well for what you're trying to do we're gonna grab this guy right here and then grab another color and I kind of want to make this a little bit darker and we're going to turn this brush down a little bit and then you can see I'm just tapping and most of these modern tablets have the ability uh, they have a touch sensor and what that means is depending on how hard you touch it is how hard the paint lays down so if I really just mash it down and drag it, it's it will act just like a brush. If I just tap it a little bit, then we get our little pattern. And you want this to look more like leaves than a big brush stroke. And like I said, you play with it. Uh, and you can always use the back button. Like if it gets out of hand and you don't like what you just did, just hit the back button. Now on this bank, these trees are a little closer so we're going to tap in some a little bit bigger stuff just a little bit and then we'll go smaller as we get farther away maybe a little bit down here maybe there's a little bit sticking up there and then we will go all the way down our bank just kind of blending these colors together and we'll go real small down here see I pushed a little too hard right there there we go now sticking with this same brush we will go even darker almost black and we're gonna do this again but I'm gonna turn the intensity down to about little less than half 40 percent 30 percent something like that and then we will start getting this effect and also when we get down to this level we want to go even smaller with our brushes so that we can really start burying that out maybe there's one sticking up there back there and just play with this you could spend all day 
getting all these leaves and branches just the way you want them. It's however you want to do this. Don't don't try to uh, imitate. You just play with this and you come up with what looks good to you and you stick with that and there's also a point where you have to know when you need to stop so now we've got this foliage going on here and uh, what we'll do now we've got the dark on there we're gonna put just a little touch of a highlight and we're gonna go pretty bright orange but I'm gonna drop the flow way down say 10 percent and I'm not going to use a very big brush on this and we're just going to kind of tap in some highlights on these dark reds and then we're going to go super bright yellow and tap in just a few more of these little highlights out here nothing too dramatic if you really go crazy with this it'll kind of get out of hand on you so now down here where we've added these uh, this foliage down here that doesn't really match the rest of our tree line we'll go back to that acrylic brush right here this is our dry acrylic brush we're going to turn our line tool back on and we're going to make it a pretty good size brush and I'm going to grab right at the bottom of that foliage and I'm going to drag straight down and you'll see it's going to give us the effect of just a few little tree trunks out there and that's what we're after alright so now right here where this kind of looks a little funky this is an airbrush right here you're going to grab your airbrush and with this color puck right here when you click on it there's a sample right here so you grab this little dropper and you grab the sample color that you want and so I sampled this really dark black back here and turn this line tool off and then what we'll do is just kind of go right along the bottom of these trees and make sure that it is broken between our leaves and our tree trunks and then remember this brush down here that we were using to put our uh, smudges in we're going to grab it back and just again sample anywhere in here it doesn't really matter and we're just going to drop a few hints we'll turn that up just a little bit just a few hints of a few leaves right on the bottom there just to kind of hide that we'll turn that opac that flow down just a little bit we'll turn that down and we will just drag those down so that it kind of masks that line between the tree trunks and the foliage so now we've got a really good start here on our uh, painting and uh, we can go and you can drop a big piece of land right here you can have a tree limb coming in right here kind of hiding some of this however you want to do it now in my mind let's see what can we do here so in my mind what I'm seeing is that maybe the stars are just starting to come out a little bit maybe we can just start seeing the Milky Way out there a little bit so we need to find a nice little brush that mimics splat and paint on the canvas kinda like when they take the their brush and they'll splat it like this to make the stars in the sky the same thing we're doing here digitally 
so you're going to turn that all the way on white and I like to make this brush as big as I possibly can and again you're just tapping these in if I go and push hard uh, well it's not going to do it now sometimes when you push too hard it makes this big giant splat and if you drag it there you go it's going to make this we don't want that so we just want to tap in a few and they'll go down here below the actual sun shine just a little bit we're going to put in just a few of these this is the very last light of the day and now we're going to create the Milky Way and we will start that on a brand new layer and for the Milky Way I will actually use a cloud brush <clears throat> and this little misty brush right here is my favorite to make a Milky Way with so we got our brush all the way up but I want it to be pretty low flow maybe 15 percent we'll see we'll see how this looks if it's too intense just back up and do it again so I gotta kinda choose where it's gonna show up at and you don't want it to just look like a line you want it to have a little bit of shape to it so now that looks alright but now we're gonna grab this eraser right here and again we're gonna make it uh, oh about that size but I'm gonna turn the flow all the way down on that eraser so that as I erase this stuff it's a gentle erase so I can really soften this up if you rub repeatedly on a spot it will go completely away But if you just kind of go over the top of some of these you can get rid of a lot of it without completely getting rid of it you'll still have that indication up there now as it gets lighter of course the Milky Way will be a lot less visible so we don't want a whole lot of this little cloud Milky Way down here where the sun's still shining over the horizon so as you climb it will get more and more visible now if you're real careful with how you set up your brushes initially you won't have this much to worry about there'll be a lot less erasing to do but that just takes skill and it's uh, all of these tricks are just different ways of doing the same thing if you get really skilled with your brush you won't have to worry about we're gonna go back to our splat you won't have to worry about the eraser part so now up here in the Milky Way it is gonna be full of stars so we're gonna add a few more stars here than the rest of the sky has just kind of make this look like it's a little bit more full of stars and then again we're going to bring it down just a little bit so that, so that maybe you can't see the Milky Way but you'll see a few of those stars kind of bleeding over all right so we've got all these stars in here but I want it to kind of vary so again I'm gonna go back to this eraser and I'm gonna start just kind of picking out random spots and dragging some of these stars out of the sky just to give it a little bit of variation just a little variation maybe even just a little bit lighter right there there we go okay so now we're gonna add a new layer and we're gonna add a new part of the Milky Way because it's not just plain white it does have a little bit of red and yellow and everything else in it so we're gonna kinda grab kind of a burnt orange maybe I don't know peach color and then we're going to go back to that 
cloud brush this one here and I am going to turn the intensity way down on this to about seven percent and we're just going to kind of hit it so I'm saying if you get skilled enough with the brush then you don't have to worry about the erasing part as much and just a little bit of color is all I'm looking for I'm not looking for anything super intense just a little color alright so we got a nice sunset real last light it's bleeding into the Milky Way a little bit uh, this is a little sharp right here so we're going to go back to that original cloud brush that we started with and I'm going to set very big and very light 3% maybe and then I'm going to sample this darkest part of the blue and I'm actually going to start bringing this down and darkening this up just a little bit so that we blend out just a little bit better and I'm doing it right on that top layer right we're going to turn the intensity up just a little bit we'll go to five percent see what happens alright and now we're going to actually add a new layer and uh, we're going to turn the intensity up even a little bit higher up to about 15 and uh, we are going to go well let's not go straight black but we're going to grab a blue we're going to go way down almost black with the blue and then we are going to start breaking this up right here a little bit and you can see how it's going to make you look like you got some brighter spots in the clouds it's a really cool effect i really like what it does for the whole painting kind of breaks everything up maybe even down here there's just a little bit of a darker area these really are just kind of the last dying lights of the night or of the day I'm sorry going into the night time all right so instead of adding the big tree branch or something like that I put the Milky Way up there now for the the big finishing touch that I really like to do it's always a good idea at this point of the game and in most points is to save your work right now because we're fixing to take a big step here we're just gonna call this a uh, sunset galaxy so at this point I have this project saved so whatever I screw up from this point on I can go back and pick it back up so we're going to turn the symmetry tool off and then we're going to take this right here on this top layer and inside of the top layer there's this little toolbar right here you're going to click on that and then I'm going to drag to merge all and what that does I don't have any layers anymore it's all one painting right now okay so we're going to go down to our smudge brush again I'm not adding any new layers or anything else like that we're going to grab this smudge brush and we want it to be approximately the size of from the bottom of the painting to our shoreline so we need it just a little smaller just like maybe just a little bigger I think I had it right the first time just about like that right so you got to kind of find your target here you're going to turn that line tool back on and we're going to turn this intensity up to about six or seven we'll go seven this time and then you're going to take it and you're going to drag it straight and make sure that's a straight line let it go and now you've got your water effect in there so now you it looks like reflecting water on your on your lake here so also don't start a new layer take your smudge brush again lower it way down and what we're going to do this little shoreline right here turn your line tool off 
this little shoreline we're going to start dragging this out a little bit we're going to start darkening this up blending it out we're just softening this up for a second right here at the very edge of these shore banks drag that out just a little bit just a little bit on each side don't let them touch let them get close to touching again it's your painting you do it however you want to so now we're going to grab an acrylic paint brush I'm sorry an oil paint brush and I like this little pencil thin one here and I want this to be black and uh, we're going to turn our line tool back on and I'm just going to throw in a few little indications of this out there because just like your real paintbrush it wants to like it will run out of paint you know what I mean like wherever you started at it's going to act like it's running out of paint before it gets to the end just like if you had a glob of paint on your brush and then you get this little effect here where it doesn't just look like one straight line and just put a few little variations in there just so it looks a little different drag it out there just a little bit we'll go back this way some we want to break that up just a little all right now we've got a so we've got not just the orange but we've got a little bit of black mixed in there we will grab this acrylic dry brush again our old buddy here made all these trees for us in just a couple seconds and uh, I'll turn this down and I'll turn this intensity to yeah, we'll call it five percent still gotta have our line tool on and then I want that to be just a little bigger than the than this uh, actual shoreline and what that will allow us to do is again kind of drag this out break it up a little bit Just to make it look a little bit more real. Then we're going to turn the line tool off and we're going to do a little bit of this manually because in all my years I've never seen a perfectly straight shoreline anywhere. So we'll kind of give this a little bit of shape to it. Just a little bit. We are actually going to go back and grab our smudge brush and add a little bit more shape to it and we want to turn that up quite a bit about 10 percent and then we'll really start making this look a little bit more organic and a little bit less digital so we're just kind of blending these colors together I don't want that to just be like super bright and I don't want it to be the same on both sides of this lake either bring that down a little bit and there's all kinds of other little effects you can do to put some grass and stuff like that down here see I grabbed some of that sunshine there didn't I See, I'm just kind of swooping that down to give that a little bit different look than just a straight line. That's not what we're after. Okay, so we've got a little shoreline in there. We've got our galaxy in the sky. And for the last thing, at this point we are going to add a new layer on the R painting. And I am going to go back to this brush here which we made our super dark shoreline with and uh, again this is one of those moments where we got to be a little bit brave here right about here I'm just gonna cut in a little hillside pure black 
that's kind of coming down in front of our lake make that whatever shape you want whatever size you want just make it work for your painting and uh, we're just going to make this a little grassy hillside I'm not going to put a bush in it this time and you can go in here and manually cut every blade of grass with an oil brush however you want to do it there's no right or wrong way this is just art man but this little uh, grass brush right here and you'll find this kind of grass brush in almost every digital art software make sure the uh, flow is all the way up and then you're just going to throw in a little bit of grass right here in the front and all that's going to do is break up the scenery a little bit so that we look like we're sitting on the bank of this lake chilling out watching the sun go down in this real pretty little lake that we found so you compose your painting however you want to compose your painting there's like I said there's no right or wrong way to do it now we're gonna add a little bit of an orange color maybe even a little more towards the yellow this same brush you're gonna take and you're gonna turn the flow way down 20% still too much we're gonna go down 3% there we go and just kind of in the shadows here you'll be able to see just a little bit of that grass color shining through here we'll make it even bigger right here close to us and again it's just a little bit and then we will go back and change it all the way black again and we'll hit those same spots we'll turn our flow all the way back up we'll hit those same spots right there in front of us and break up those shapes a little bit and now we've got our little grassy hillside that we sit on to watch the Milky Way and that's really it and you can sit and play with this you can add more details and layers into this foliage you can add more stars in the sky I'll show you one cool little thing right here there's some lighting effects inside of a sketchbook grab this one right here it's the glow brush and it's the little twinkle brush here and we're going to make this twinkle red and we're going to pick out a twinkling star let's see, we're going to pick one of these out right here this guy right here is twinkling he's twinkling at us we're going to put the twinkle out there and then I'm going to grab the glow brush by itself and we're going to turn it now this is a super strong brush right here so you got to kind of be careful with this guy turn it up about that size and then we're going to turn the intensity uh, maybe up just a minute and you just want to tap that thing I mean yes just, just barely tap it and we're going to make it even bigger and we're just going to tap it again and we get this little glowing shining star effect change the color to maybe yellow or orange or blue or whatever you choose now this time we're going to turn the intensity up and you have got to make this look right you've got to hit the center of that crosshair put a little little shine up there that's a little bit too big just a little shine like that now you've got a twinkling star up in the sky and if it's twinkling a little too hard take your eraser kind of soften that twinkle up a little bit maybe that was too intense you know I find when you go a little bit more subtle it actually looks a little better we're just going to turn the twinkle down a little bit on this guy and again if you're good with your brush to begin with and you know exactly what intensity you want and how to get it it's easier to do it the first time but the eraser is always there for you
Now I'll go over filtering these out and uh, doing all kinds of other things. Uh, I will real quick throw a filter on this one though I'm not really going to explain it to you. We'll do that on another video. So we'll save it. Sunset Galaxy 1. I will open that file in another program called Photor. And again, we'll go over this program later on. I'll do that in another video. And uh, there's a lot of effects built into this program. And I've got a few in here. This is just like if you were, uh, for all you Instagram, Facebook kind of people, this is the same kind of filters. We kind of want to find the one that, that suits us the best. And I know as I'm clicking through these, there's a lot of people going to be like, ooh, that one, that one. But I kind of have a specific look I like to have. So I'm going to choose this one. I want it to kind of look like a more like a traditional painting. I'll turn the sharpness back up. Get a little bit of vignette. Turn my saturation back up just a hair. The contrast is huge. Contrast can make or break one of these. Turn that up just a little bit. I want it to feel just a little warmer. So we'll go there. I like to have just a little bit of a weird tint to everything. I don't know. That's probably bright enough right there. And you got to kind of play with these. Sometimes you get these little circle effects, but you know what? I kind of dig them sometimes, so I'll leave them in there a lot of times. Nice and warm. It's a nice warm fall night. Turn the color up a little bit more. We'll save it right there. And every time I save one, I try to uh, change the name of it so that I'm not, not overriding the file before it. So here's our before. And you guys have seen me do this a million times. And now you've seen behind the scenes. And here's our after. So it just looks a little bit more like an actual painting. And a little bit less like a digital painting. Nothing left to do here, but give it a, the old OG Sun signature, and I'm gonna grab the color right out of the sky. Let's see, I want that to be a little bit small, and we're gonna sign it over here this time. And double X's for 2020. And I hope this helped you guys. And uh, like I said, this was just a kind of a quick and easy one. You could spend a lot more time on this and you can make it look a whole lot better than this. But this is just a fast and simple way to do these. And folks in general seem to really like these. You can do a lot more with these trees. You can do a lot more with those stars. You could do a lot more with these reflections and shorelines. But I just wanted to do a quick one because I've been asked to do a tutorial on how I do these. There it is. We could spend days and days perfecting this. And you're more than welcome to. Uh, but that's how I do them. And I appreciate you guys coming by and watching. Remember, OG-san's got your back. Till the next video, OG-san out.